Yeah, I'm Julie Schecksneider. My business is uh, Community Pilates in New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay. Yes. Thank you. My light just died for some reason. Uh Uh-oh. There we go. Um, Yeah. So tell me about your class that you started today. Well, um, it's been a couple months since I've taught a group class. I took a little bit of a hiatus, a little bit of a mental health hiatus. And um, today was the first day back. So okay. I'm doing, yeah, it was just, yeah it's, it's, it's been really intense, but really great to see all my students. Um, we're doing a seven day intensive. So Monday through Sunday, every morning at 7.15 and every evening at 6. So there's a morning crew wow. and there's an evening crew. Okay, so and people aren't doing two days. Are there no, any- I mean, I don't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> there might be the one person who decides to do both, but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so my morning crew is kind of like my diehards. I've had a lot of them for years and we've had that 7.15 a.m. time for years. And so... I wanted to cap it out at 10 people just because like, I want to be able to pay attention to everybody on the screen, which, you know, as you know, is like, it's a new thing for us to have to teach by watching on a screen. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I couldn't say no, there's so many of them that there's like 20 people in class and it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's great. And all new, like, none of them are, like, basic new movers. So you can None of them are new. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of them are newer to Pilates. I've I've had people for years and years, but there are, Mm -hmm. you know, some people who've only been taking class for, like, a year. But everyone knows their modifications. Like, they know the the vocabulary and the language. And uh, they just, they're really into it. It's just my kind of student, you know. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, like, who is, like, your ideal student your ideal client student clients well do you call them students or clients like first I of said, all i go back and forth yeah. i i don't think i stick with one i think i i go back and forth student client i call myself a teacher and an instructor i never yeah. really stick with one label um mm. it just depends on the day <laughs> uh <laughs> the ideal client is somebody open-minded that's my only criteria and even someone who comes to me maybe less than open-minded I want to see if there's that entry point where I can get in and, and maybe just get them to take a deep breath and relax and, and trust something new yeah, and try right. something new. You know, yes. um, I'm not going to do well with somebody who's trying to control the process. That, that's mm-hmm. just like, we're not going to have a good relationship if that happens. <laughs> but I, I can't remember the last time that happened, to be honest with you. Yes. I can't remember it's mm-hmm. been it's been probably a decade since I've had a situation like yes. that. Right. Yeah. I was gonna say. So how long you have you been teaching for? Oh gosh. Uh, let's see. Almost twenty years, I would say. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's that's usually like your first five to six years when you're trying to find your feet, and you're trying to find right. your words, and you're just taking everybody. And totally. Then, and as you kind of move <laughs> on, you're like, I have no space for you. So yeah. <laughs> or just like learning boundaries. You know, I yes. I grew up as a people pleaser, and you know, I'm 42 now, so like the time for that is over. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> the time for people pleasing is long gone. Mm-hmm. But you know, my in my 20s, I just wanted everyone to like me. And so I would show up to class with that like eager to please attitude and Mm -hmm. people can just like sense that immediately. And if they're the type of person who wants to be in control, they're going to control you in a, in a snap, you know, it happens so quickly and then you can't reverse that process once it's in place. It's like blood in the water. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sharks around just chum yeah <laughs> yeah honestly and, and it's true right like i mean i think we need to um like when i hear people say that that people pleasing thing and you say oh, i'm 42 and and I, I figure that out i love hearing people who are in their 60s 70s and 80s and they just don't care about anything like they're past I love the, that. yeah they're past that like people pleasing thing and they're they're into the i don't care what you think thing right <laughs> like that's exactly that continuum. And right. then my, my thought then is like, well, how do I get there now? Like, how do I get to a place where the opinions of people don't matter? I'm not trying to please people. I'm chasing after my passions. I'm trying mm-hmm. to be me, unapologetically me, and let the rest of the stuff just fall by the wayside. Yeah. I mean, that's something that I learned in, in therapy, actually. And I feel like it's not something I had a good grasp on until like the last two years of my life, mm-hmm. um, because 
I love helping people and I love serving people and you know, that's great. And there are people who will be drawn to you who will not take advantage of you, but there are also people who, like we said, can just smell that and they're just like automatically drawn to you. And before you know it, you find yourself exhausted mm -hmm. or resentful or bitter. And I just, I just don't want that anymore. So I've learned right. some very simple and it doesn't have to be like people think of boundaries as like, being rude or being, you know, unkind. And it's right. really not. It's, it's probably the kindest thing that we can do is like, let somebody know what our limits are. So they don't right. have to guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is like one of those like, sidebar moments in teaching a class where you, you go off into your like mentor moment. Yeah, right? like we're yeah. just kind of you sometimes that happens where you're moving really hard, and then you pause and you get into this little bit of a conversation. So right. what, what would be some of those tips that you would say to your people in your class who, who need to find those boundaries, who need to find that? Um, I would say start with the body. You know, take, take deep breaths. Mm -hmm. Try to bring yourself back to your body. Like, what are you experiencing and where? So, yes. like, for me, <laughs> I'll start to feel if my boundaries are being crossed or violated, I'll start to feel a sort of burning in my throat and in my chest, right? Yes. And, I'll, and I'll get this like anxious feeling in my stomach. So if, mm -hmm. if we can identify the physical response, take a couple deep breaths, just name it, you know, yes. just like, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that they're not gonna like me. I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint somebody. And it's somehow mm -hmm. just like naming it and breathing through it gives it so much less power less power yeah. yeah yeah and you know i just learned the beauty of the phrase even just last week that's not what i want <laughs> it's something just you know like not like well i've got so much going on i just can't uh, just that's not what i'm sorry that's not what i want and yeah. it feels really hard to do when you're so used to giving everybody what they want and mm. yeah um but my advice to my clients would be Start with your body. Like, where are you experiencing it in your body? Right. And just start there. You said a line that I've heard many teachers say, and I, I probably caught myself saying it too, and we kind of throw it around. You said, get back to your body. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Or we say lines like, you know, we just need to get that in your body. Right. So can, so can we break down, get back to your body? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, even just saying that I'm creating this like dichotomy of the mind and the body. But I guess mm -hmm. what I mean is like, we tend to dissociate, you know, at, at least I'll speak for myself, I disassociate whenever I'm anxious, which is as an introvert, I'm anxious a lot when I'm in, in public situations. Um, so if I can just identify if I can start with something physical and bring myself back into the physical experience of my body, like, yes, what am I smelling? What am I seeing? What am I tasting? Yes. Like bringing it back to my senses. And then that's a very yes. grounding activity that I can then go forward with my thoughts and then have something, something right. to ground myself with. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sort of a floating head over yes. here yeah, <laughs> observing yeah. yeah right and that floating head over there is focused on performing right it's a, right it's, it's focused on achieving something instead of the actual journey to achieving it yes and it's focused on what do they think of me what what kind of um, image am i portraying right now am i yes. am i making a fool of myself am right. i yeah 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 right and then how do we create a safe space so people can just be exactly not, not worry about the person and i maybe it's my football background but i keep coming back to even though there's you know you may have x amount of people on the field it is first of all it's me versus the guy in front of me but then more importantly it's me versus me right so i catch right. myself saying that to my clients a lot i was like this is you versus you right now like is, you're not in competition with them, someone else on the screen it's not yeah. about you know what i mean this is you versus you you did it last week. It looked like this. What is it going to look mm -hmm. like today? Right. I know. I know. It's I yeah. It's like letting go of our own personal histories too, because right. maybe maybe you rolled up this morning, and now mm -hmm. you can't roll up. Maybe you rolled up in your last repetition, and you can't roll up now. It's it's just right. like it's a moment by moment thing, and just mm -hmm. because we could do something yesterday or five minutes ago doesn't mean we're in the same space. So much changes time, moment to moment. Moment to moment, right, mm -hmm. absolutely. 
So the struggle that I'm having with that personally is finding that sweet spot between giving myself enough space and forgiveness and um, acceptance yeah, and actually pushing myself to achieve more. Right. 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 Cause I mean like if yeah. we let ourselves off the hook all the time, are we actually getting better? Yeah, but- this is absolutely something I, I think about this all the time because I think we have this, our culture has this kind of ingrained attitude that, we're going to let ourselves get away with something. Like we have to be hard on ourselves. We have to discipline ourselves. Otherwise we're not going to change. But I think there's this fine balance. There's this um, like dialectic between here I am now, I accept it and I love it. And there's compassion involved. Here's where I want to be. And how can I sort of like float between those two places without beating myself up? Right. You know, I'm going to play both sides of that argument. (laughs) for a minute right because like I, I i when i'm around people that really drive themselves i find that i have to be careful to not save them if that's how they're motivated mm-hmm. right. right right yeah that's that's a i'm gr- i'm so glad you just said that because i forget that people aren't like me <laughs> <laughs> okay I need to be reminded all the time. I need to be reminded constantly like, oh, this is how I think. But, you know, there's that type A person out there who is like driven and needs and needs to have that kind of self-disciplinary thing inside of them to get to get what they want out of themselves. I'm I come from that other side of like it's okay. Like you're, you're, you're wonderful. (laughs) And now try to take that next step. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you said football background. And now, now I'm curious, is that soccer, Canadian football? Oh, right. Yeah. It's it's American football. American football. Yeah. Or or shall we say Canadian football? Yeah. Um, Yeah. But no, University, Canadian University plays American football rules, and then they have the CFL here. So right. I just played university ball. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But and that's the thing. Like, it's just for me. It's just a language in the sense of you know people have individual sports and then they have team sports. Yeah. And I, I believe personally that football is one of the best team sports because every individual has their response, respective responsibility on the team. Right. And if someone else is doing my job, then their job has a void and it impacts the whole team. Right. So I don't have to be like anybody else. I could be myself. I could run my play. I could do my role well. Yeah. And that helps the whole team instead of me looking at someone else and saying, I have to be a quarterback too. Absolutely. To, you know what I mean? So that's, yeah. that's the analogy that I keep coming back to for life because we look at all these amazing instructors in this world. And if mm-hmm. I have someone like, you know, Pilates and scoliosis, Laura on, and then she's a master at working with people with that, I may feel like I need to be better at scoliosis and yeah. people with that. I need to work at the spot. I need to go take a course on that. Like, <laughs> no, that's, like you mean, like I, I can totally, keep, yeah. Chasing after being her, or I can right. be my play, my position on the field. Exactly. Cause there's so many, like you said, so many amazing people in our mm-hmm. field. And now, you know, I, I've kind of stayed off the grid, off the Instagram grid for a while, but you know, I'm on here now. And um, the wonderful thing about it is I get to see instructors I would have never have seen otherwise, because I'm sort of in my little bubble here in New Orleans, you know, and mm-hmm. I, and I'm very much a local person. I've never like had a desire to be like a public figure. I just, I work locally, you know, in my neighborhood mostly. And um, yeah, so, so seeing everyone on Instagram, I'm not naturally like a super competitive person, but that, that thing in me is like, well, maybe I need to learn prenatal Pilates. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then yeah. all of a sudden I throw everything into doubt, everything I actually know, all yes. I can see is the void in my knowledge. And then I'm scrambling right. to try to... F- to fill all these voids. But like you said, just if I play the position, <laughs> play my position, everyone else can play their position and there's going to be yes. no turnovers, right? <laughs> Thank you. I, especially with someone like Chelsea last week who has like a PhD in motor learning theory. You right. sit there like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like 
yeah, you can't compare it to that, right? Yeah. Or then, you know, then have Kathy the next day. She's like a historian, and she's yeah, like, I know. There's so many like rich, rich people, and even Tap Pilates just showed up, right? Like she's like yeah. amazing businesswoman and, and Pilates and stuff. So some people are just awesome being an instructor in a mm-hmm. studio. And they have a great following and they just want to be a face in the crowd. People show up, they teach them, they change lives. And then those people leave and then they go home. Right. And other That's people my want kind to... of style. Right, exactly. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. And then someone else wants to be this prolific entrepreneur and have totally. like just residual income and people working for them and an international traveling circuit. And, you know, that's everyone has a different position to play. Exactly. And it's all great. And we can learn from everyone. And, you know, something I've always told my, my clients from day one is like, go take from other instructors. I know that we become really comfortable. I have my favorite instructors too. And and I I just feel warm and cozy when I'm with them and I know what to expect, but, and I know their language, but you know, we can learn from everyone. We can Mm -hmm. learn from the apprentice who's still going through their program, you know? Absolutely. I feel like I want to throw out the yes, but to everything you say, just <laughs> Do it. it's, it's a fun conversation, right? <laughs> yeah. So now what you said is so true. Shop your instructors, as my wife says, she's mm-hmm. in group fitness and, and teaches yeah. and stuff. So shop your instructors, so to speak, and find that people. And then like uh, Kai, when he was on here saying like, who is your Joseph? Yeah. Right. So there's the flip side. Yeah. yeah. Shop everybody, find these people. But then at the same time, if you have your people that you're comfortable with, they know your language, mm-hmm. the flip side is they also know you, they know your body and they can just extract that little extra out of you. Right. Absolutely. So find yes. should and, all have our Joseph. You know what I mean? So <laughs> like you, yes, exactly. Right. So it's just interesting. Yeah. Like there's so many different angles to all these different things that we flow through here. It's also, it, it's always to me, both and. It's like, yes. yes, have this, and yes, also have this too. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I've had, my teacher was my Joseph, and I feel like that's the reason why I became an instructor. Because like so many of us, I started off as a client, mm-hmm. and I just... I can't imagine having fallen in love with this method so much if I hadn't had that, that relationship, that like teacher, student, client, yes. instructor relationship that just made mm-hmm. me so passionate. Yes. And it, it had to do with like that person knowing my body and knowing what I was capable of. And, right. and just be, like you said, being able to extract just that little thing, mm-hmm. whatever it is that you needed that day, you right. know, even if it meant like take a day off go home and and take a day off yeah right exactly Mm -hmm. i can imagine that your people love you for that now because if you if you recognize that and what that's been done how that's been done for you we just naturally give that to everyone that's willing right yeah i mean i'm pretty passionate about it and i love i love geeking out about pilates and they know Mm -hmm. it and i think i think it's contagious because i think now they get it like they're get it they're understanding it and we all when we say that phrase get it I think we all know what each other means. Instructors yes. know it. I can't define what that is, but it's like, right. oh, I'm yes. not just doing these movements. Now I understand how this thing on the tower connects to this thing on the reformer. Now I understand right. how this, like, yeah, like we just get it. And right. I love that I could see my clients kind of getting it around the same time. Mm-hmm. Like they go through this process together yes. in, in these group classes and, you know, I'm a perfectionist, so in an ideal world, I'd have them all in a fully equipped studio going mm-hmm. through the whole system every single day, yes. but that's not feasible, so <laughs> we do what we can. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um, you say that, I think that, that happens to me sometimes too, where like all of your clients, have you ever had this like where you go through a week and like everyone just gets it? Yes. Like you go from client to client, it's like, the whole world's just having a great week right now. Yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. And then I'm yeah. like, what's going on with the planet? What's, going on? what's yeah. happening? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the converse happens too, where you roll in and then like you spend just like half an hour in a counseling session and then, <laughs> and then the next person cries and then the next person just shows up and they're injured and they just, right. and then you just, right. Like, yes. Or you're like, you're early just... that night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're like, how many times have we gone over the setup for the hundred? I know you guys know this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So funny. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, one of the lines that you said earlier that I wanted to circle back to was the, uh, that's not what I want line. Right. Oh, the boundary. That's not the what boundary I want. Piece. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. now with that, do you expect to have a, this is what I want line to follow that up? Or is it suffice to just say, that's not what I want? Um, it depends on the situation. I think where, when I thought of that particular line, I was thinking of an interpersonal relationship that wasn't mm -hmm. a business relationship. And um, with people who are, whether they know it or not, manipulative and will, mm -hmm. and will keep pushing and keep pushing past that no. Yeah. And that to me is like a final stance. That's the like, stop, you cannot, you cannot go past that stop sign. This is not yes. what I want. Yes. With with somebody a little less rigid, I, of course, would say, well, you know, this isn't what I want. I prefer this instead. Yes. How can how can we come up with a solution that honors what we both want? Right. Um, but if a boundary is being violated, I think it's it's, like, it's yeah, it's by. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 No, no time for that. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, that's I think that's one of my personal things too. That like when people express what they don't want, but then they can't express what they do want. Yeah, yeah. Right? This is something. So, yeah, this is. I've had this posed to me, you know, in a personal way with like my girlfriends. They're like, okay, so you don't want this in a partner. We know everything you don't want in a partner because you've said it over and over. But like, what do you actually want? <laughs> what do you actually <laughs> want? <laughs> Right. And, and that's when I think the productive part of, of that work comes into play. Because sometimes yeah. you learn who you don't want to be. You learn who you want to be by seeing who you don't want to be. Yeah. You know, and you learn what you want by knowing what you don't want. And that's the first sure. step for a lot of people. But it does people. then, yeah. yeah, it needs to get to that, that place of like, I can actually name what I want now. Right. Otherwise, yeah. it's just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. When you start looking for those no's, right? Like, right. that's the thing. You actually, your, your eye gets trained to look for the no's. Yeah. This is good, but does it? Okay, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? As opposed yeah. to the other way around. Absolutely. And I think I read somewhere, I'm, of course, I'm not going to be able to remember where, that we are, like, biologically, genetically um, designed to search for the problem you know, to search for the danger and to search for the thing that we want to avoid. So right. then it, it becomes this like extra little bit of work as a human being to then be able to rephrase that and out of survival mode into like thriving mode. So yes. I'm not just trying to survive, but how do I thrive and how can I name what I want? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's the challenge. You're, you're right. Like we do have to train ourselves to that. And yeah. we see that, you know, whether it like even here's a perfect example of that. Um, our Pilates work, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at it from a contemporary versus classical, and is this an exercise or is that an exercise? Yeah. What is this person teaching? And then we sit there, okay, is that contemporary? Okay, that's contemporary. I'm not going to pay any attention to that. <laughs> right. right? Or right. we're like, okay, oh, okay, that was a classical move. Let me see what this person has to offer. Right. Yeah. Like we, we, we train our eye looking for the negative. We train our eye mm -hmm. looking for the different instead of training our eye to look for the similarity. Absolutely. I love that example. That's a great mm. example. Because yeah, we become so rigid if that's if that's the only way we're seeing the world. And we stop making generous assumptions, you know, we stop like, love that. Yeah. looking at other, other things as possibilities of something that would actually be enveloped in our own work. You know, if, if yeah. I'm just like closed off to contemporary, because I am a classical teacher, I'm missing out on so much. Mm -hmm. And it also reveals something about my insecurities, too, I think. If I'm a classically trained teacher, which I am, and I just say, no, no contemporary, this is what Joseph did, and, and become this sort of rigid person, I'm right. really revealing my own fear. You know, mm -hmm. I'm revealing a fear that I don't actually know any contemporary work, or yes. I don't really know how to define that, instead right. of maybe going to somebody who does and humbling myself and mm -hmm. asking for help and hey right. can you take me through a session and show me what what you teach sure absolutely yeah. i mean if you want to take it even a, a step deeper than that like that shows our supremacy and that shows our privilege right? absolutely like, absolutely I, I know this 
I'm better than you. Right. You don't know this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all we're saying, right? Like Exactly. And I think we've all been in a situation like that where somebody's kind of pulled that elitism in terms of, um, yes. you know, I went to, as an example, I went to Georgia State University as an undergrad and then went to graduate school at the University of Chicago. And there were people there who had, you know, gone to Yale and Princeton and Harvard. And I felt definitely in that, in that role of, oh, well, you just, you just went to a state university. Like you couldn't possibly, you know, obviously I'm caricaturizing these people. Like, yes. you know, it's not a monolith of, of people who went to Ivy league schools and are like pointing the finger at me, but that feeling of here's the standard, everything else is not You just real. squeaked by. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it happens so often. I mean, luckily, in my personal experiences at studios, I, I'm not in, in a studio environment anymore. So I don't really know. It's been years. But I have not had very many experiences like that in terms of instructors that I've known who, um, who have shunned other instructors. Right. But I've heard, you know, I've heard, we've, we've all heard stories and we see I think I see things online more than I've seen in real life in terms of that, yeah. that classical versus contemporary divide. Mm -hmm. And you, you hear it, you hear it like phrased as real, real, authentic, authentic, classical, uh, like lineage. Yeah, kind of, right. Yeah. 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 I think it's eroding. I, I really mm -hmm. believe that, you know, that conversations like these normalize the situation when it comes to it all being movement. Right. You know, like it's, I think that we forget that because we get so, like we're so close to it that we, we really lose sight that if we take a few steps back, it's just movement. We take a few Absolutely. more steps back, it's, it's just fitness. It's just one small corner of the whole fitness industry. Right, yeah. Right, so. Yeah. Um, but we're so in it and like, I think, you know, it's, it's really small. It's, it's, big, it's, really, it's, it's small. really, really small. Our world. It's such a niche. Yeah. My teacher used to tell me like, I would come into the studio and just be so serious, you know, and like be rolling like a ball and so serious. And like, how, how are you rolling like a ball and so serious? It's just yeah. kind of funny. And right. he's like, it's just Pilates, you know, we're yeah. not, we're not curing cancer. You're fine. Just roll like a ball. <laughs> right? Right. You don't have to take it so seriously. And yeah. I think that I say that in my mind, I can hear my teacher constantly saying like, it's just Pilates. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. And here comes the next dichotomy, right? Like, <laughs> cause we are, it is, it, we need to be having fun, but we also need to be really serious about doing this. Well, because True. you know, it, kind of does cure cancer or kind of does help PTSD or kind of does know, help with, you know what I mean? So yeah, you're right. I like, I like this. I like that you're challenging me on this. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> you're absolutely right. It's right. I've seen, you know, the, the reason why I teach it is because it changed my life and I've seen it change clients lives. And I really think like personally, it's the only thing that I can rely on that, will help yes. me out of a mood disorder, like will help me out yes. of depression and out of right. anxiety. Yeah. And it's just such a stark difference between not doing it and doing it. It's such a mm -hmm. simple thing. And that's the difference between being in bed for weeks at a time or like being a busy person who's doing all of these different things that she loves, you know? So you're right. Yes. We, we are, it is important and that's not to, <laughs> Invalidate what we do at all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We're like dancing on this line with every <laughs> statement that we make right now. So if it's we perfect. offend anyone, like, yes. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. And I, I have to remind myself on both sides of it, right? Like you have fun with it and I need to just, just roll around and have fun. But then there's yeah. times when it's like, no, dial it in. Because like people are really depending on you to get this right sometimes too, right? Yeah. Like you get to this place where if we do this right, this can be a game changer for somebody. Totally. Absolutely. You know? can change your life. And, and when I say that, I always feel like an infomercial, but you right. know, it's true. Yes. <laughs> it's true. I'm, it's absolutely yeah. true. I, yeah. I've, I've gotten over the infomercial <laughs> cheesiness feeling because mm -hmm. it, it, it is true. It really is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's so funny. Eh? Uh, I know. I know. Um, I'm loving some of your posts. Uh, I wrote down a bunch of like little, 
one-liners out of your the one post about being motivated by joy rather than competition yeah yeah this is something again that i'm finding as i get older is easier to do um mm. as a younger dancer i was purely like motivated by competition because if you think about going into an audition That's the first culture, thing you right? do yeah you're just like looking like oh she's prettier than i am she like oh she has the body type that they want or he's a, you know he's got more extension or whatever right. whatever it is and it's this constant berating of oneself and mm -hmm. feeling like like i'm motivated to get better purely by lack like purely by <laughs> the fact so that tough. i it's yeah. so hard yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> and now now that there's nothing at stake except like my own pleasure and you know i'm not i'm not auditioning for anything i'm just like yeah. reintroducing myself to dance classes again and there's nobody watching mm -hmm. <laughs> except the instructor right. and yeah i can just be motivated by like the joy of moving and i can if I wanted to, I could not do it. It's just that easy. I could just yes. stop doing it. So right. I, I, it's just such a, a better place for me to be. Although I do like kind of look back with nostalgia on those days when I was really driven. And um, I think I romanticize them too, because I forget about those, those yes. moments of just not feeling good enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Which a woman a terrible going place through to labor, be. right? Like <laughs> right. He's like, oh, maybe you should have another child. It's like, you almost died. Do you remember? Do you remember how much it hurt? <laughs> right. You were screaming. You said you would never do this again. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We have to scratch that comment as well. I but know. I don't. Okay. I know. I shouldn't be talking about labor. I've never had children, so uh, I should just like. <laughs> no, I've, I've seen. Yeah, mom go through that twice. And yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um yes and also the other piece that you said was being intrigued by how your body will respond this time to the demands you're putting on it that intrigues me as well right because you, there's a competitive yeah. side that to many of us that is just like not just romanticizing wh what we used to be but just remembering mm -hmm. how we, we used to push ourselves and what we what our bodies were capable of and yes now when we push ourselves find out what that limit is and you know can you deal with the fact that that limit might have changed. <laughs> like, yeah, it's maybe it's a little hard. Bit shy of where it used to be, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's really it can be really disappointing um, to remember how high your leg used to be, or yes. you know, like I used to stretch in a straddle with my chest on the floor while watching TV or something like that. But yeah. I also oh, me too. Like... <laughs> never <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not necessary i think unless you're going to be you know unless you're going to be a gymnast or a professional dancer there's a, yeah. le a level of flexibility that nobody has to have yeah and this is sure. the thing you know yeah yeah but it can be difficult it can be it can be like grief it's like letting go of a version of yourself that you um associated with like youth and joy and yes. like adventure mm -hmm. but um there's like there's definitely new explorations you know yes. and i wish i had had pilates when i was a young dancer i know so much more about my body now than i did then oh for sure you know oh yeah we could beat ourselves up on that reflection yeah if Just only like, i <laughs> if oh. only <laughs> Yes. Where could I have been? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time with my clients too, I find that like when we have these conversations, be able to celebrate who we are now, not just where we are now. Right. Because exactly. that person back then, like you said, was motivated by lack. Right. And you're chasing after that piece that was missing. Sort right. of thing. So yeah, you were probably in great shape and your body fat percentage might have been lower and you might have been. Right might have had amazing endurance but then like your headspace probably wasn't the best like i know oh, for me like sure you're trying to like get that achievement trying to get that starting spot trying to get that whatever it is so you you don't, you don't actually i think we do a better job of celebrating our bodies now mm -hmm. even though it can't do as much as it did then so i'd Definitely. rather have this mindset now and this body now than that body then and that mindset that went with it Definitely. And the thing that keeps me really grateful is when I do wake up with pain, you know, like if I overdid it or, mm 
Um, and I wake up or I slept wrong. I, I had a really bad mattress for a while. So I was waking up and I'm like, oh, here we go. Here's, it starts now. Yes. <laughs> Here's yeah. where I start waking up with pain. But like just having, I didn't really know what that felt like as a younger person. I knew what soreness felt like, but I was mm -hmm. lucky. I never had injuries. I was super hypermobile. So like my, my joints could take it. My muscles could take it. And then yeah. now now I have to actually be kinder to my body <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> because my joints don't like it so much when I extend to that range of motion yes. and having that pain experience in my body definitely makes me feel like really grateful, even though, you know, at times I'm like, wow, I wish I had the flexibility of my 21 year old self. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I'm, I'm doing pretty good for 42. I'm doing all right. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I, forget, I never actually asked you, how did you find Pilates? Or, I mean, as people say, Pilates found them. But, like, how did yeah. you find Pilates? Well, I was a dancer. Um, I was dancing. I did the basically sports circuit dancing. So here in New okay. Orleans, I was an NFL cheerleader. We're called cheerleaders, but we were okay. dancers. We didn't do any cheers or stunts or cheering. It was a dance team. Okay, and cool. so I was dancing with the, the Saints organization. And, oh, um, very cool. Yeah. And then I was trying to work on some things like trying to improve stamina and my turnout and all of these different like little facets of dancing. And I'd heard rumors. This is like back in, you know, 1998. Okay. Yeah. So I'd heard rumors and New Orleans usually gets everything like a decade later than everywhere else. <laughs> so there were these rumors of this method floating around in New York, you know, and, and these right. machines and, I was super intrigued and happened to move to Atlanta the following year and, and just like found a studio and, mm -hmm. you know, in new Orleans, I couldn't, I actually couldn't find a place to take Pilates. I'm sure that one existed, but um, I think there was actually a studio at that time. But uh, once I moved to Atlanta, I had easy access to a studio. And then once I went in for a couple sessions and someone put me like on the tower and I think I did monkey on the tower and yes. just was like, oh, my God, this is what I've been missing is this yes. resistance that's helping me get this feedback on on yes. stretching, you know, mm -hmm. rather than being just this like super hyper mobile person who collapsed into stretches. I could feel the resistance of the springs and it just like it just made sense. It just seemed so yes. intelligent. Yes. And um, I just became obsessed and just wanted to do it as often as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I'm sure so many people who are watching can identify with that moment of it just yeah. making sense in your body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And like so, just the genius of the contraptions, like just the genius of the apparatus and how simple it was. But like, oh, wow, I press against a spring and that helps me elongate. And like, how does that create opposition? It's just it was just a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, where did you do? You, where did you do your first classes? Like your first uh, teacher trainings? That's where. Um, for. my first, my teacher training, and my and where I started off as a client was at Studio Lotus in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, okay. so I was. They were affiliated with uh, Power Pilates. So okay. David cool. Davidson Reed and um, Ann Brendel were my teachers there, and I basically was with them for like a decade. So I was at Studio Lotus for a while, yes. and. Um, I left Atlanta briefly to go to grad school in Chicago. And for that whole year, I was there for one year and I did not do a single bit of physical activity for an entire year. It was wow. a weird, yeah, it was a strange, it was like the first time in my entire life. Yes. And then got back to Atlanta and got back into Pilates and it, just having that contrast, I think was really important. I was going to say, you know, as much like being movement people that like, it's kind of scary to think of not moving for a year, but I'm sure yeah. your body like thanked you for giving, getting a little bit of a break too. It did. It also um, just mentally, it, it, it reminded me how important it is for my mental health. It's just mm -hmm. something I just never really thought of as a younger person. Now I'm super aware of it. Yeah, taking, but, taking it for granted. Yeah, mm -hmm. just yeah. taking it for granted. And mm -hmm. um, but having that that year of, of both being in a really strenuous situation mentally, like in an entirely new environment in graduate school and um, feeling the pressures of that, plus yes. not having that outlet of physical movement, you know, yes. just 
it was a nightmare. <laughs> it was, I think I think back and I'm like, wow, how did I survive? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I think you're like, it was good. It was refreshing. Like it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm, yes. Um, Self compassion and acceptance. Those are all parts of that parcel, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, again, a lesson I learned later on in life. Like, I would say in the past few years, it's always been really easy for me to show compassion to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, I think it was just how I was raised and uh, it was just part of my parents ethos, you know, like we grew up in a family that, that did service and we, Mm -hmm. I grew up in the church. I grew up, but I'm not religious anymore, but I grew up in the church. And so there was Mm -hmm. this emphasis on, on serving right? Yes. And that came so naturally, it felt like the right thing to do so much so that when it came time to show myself any compassion, it felt really selfish. Yes. Uh, so I had to get past that and, and recognize that actually, in order to serve other people, you really do have to start with yourself. I, I didn't understand that until recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that's, um, th- yeah, that, and I was going to say too, like that's that notion of community, like your, your name, community Pilates, right? Like yeah. there's, how did you come up with that name? That I actually borrowed from yoga because I noticed that there were a lot of community yoga classes around where, which, um, to me meant like sliding scale, um, often just like donation based. And I was trying to reach a wider audience. I was trying to like reach people who didn't have $25 to spend on a mat class. And I I planned on just having, you know, one class a week. It turned into kind of my whole thing, but uh, I just borrowed, (laughs) just borrowed that word from yoga. Like, okay, well they're doing community yoga classes. I'm going to do community Pilates classes. And it just sort of stuck. And it was an easy, easy thing to tell people like, just look Mm -hmm. up community Pilates, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. Simple. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. That's, I mean, just having something accessible, that's the challenge with Pilates because yoga is like Uber accessible, right? Like you find that there's like yoga in a park and all these different things, but Pilates because like there's so many barriers to entry that when you do it like that, then I think people are more open to, you know, uh, discovering what, you know, exploring what Pilates is. Definitely. And, and it's a fine balance. Like I didn't want to undercut other instructors. That was another thing is I, so along with letting people know that, yes, we do these sliding scale classes and we do these tiered levels of privates, here's what an instructor typically makes per hour. Like I want everyone to be aware of that and to know that they absolutely deserve it. And so when Mm -hmm. I hear people say like Pilates is too expensive and I, I want to impart the fact that, well, these instructors are valuable and they, and they deserve to have, you know, their time paid, but I also, but also please, if you can't afford this, try this class instead, you know, yes. just do, I want them to be able to do something Pilates yes. related and right. I don't want money to be a barrier. So yes. finding that balance is difficult. You know, how do I mm. make sure I'm fairly compensated? And so far it's been, it's been okay. You know, I'm not, yes. I'm not a millionaire, but <laughs> I never expected yeah. to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like what you're saying though, when you, when you create that culture, people do, their best, right? Like you don't find that like people will try and just, you know, like you hear the stories with like class pass where people just mooch like free classes all day and they just like bounce from free to free. Right. The difference between like you can afford it and I'm choosing to just beat the system right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I worried a little bit about that in the beginning, but I think Mm -hmm. as soon as I let that mentality go and just kind of trusted I know it sounds a little bit woo woo, but I just trusted that the right people would show up and that, and people who were trying to take advantage would sort of fall by the wayside. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's absolutely been the case. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's inspirational. You know, because I feel like a lot of people go through that, that challenge, right? Because they obviously want to make money and want to have a comfortable life doing what they love. 
right? Yes. So how do you do that? And then also you love the work so much. You want the whole, everyone on the planet to do it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. But you don't want to burn out and, and just give everything away. There ha like, that's why I made sure that I let everyone know, here's what the market determines we should be making, or this is what a class normally costs in this costs. market. And yes. here's what, here's what I'm offering you. Here's the scale be honest with yourself and yes. what can you afford, you right. know, and people are really generous. And so people who can afford more do pay more and people Amazing. who, yeah, yeah, people who can't are very apologetic, which I don't want. And I, I mm -hmm. also want there to be no guilt associated right. with like paying less. Right, um, right. But somehow we found a nice balance, which is great. And knock on wood, we can continue. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that that comes down to you as the leader establishing that as a culture, right? Like right. The more that we do that and just put words to that, people will yeah. you know, fall in suit, right? And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we're not rookie teachers where we had to just say yes to everybody anymore. Too, That's right. So, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Those days are gone. Thank <laughs> Those God. Those days are gone. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, Julie, that was like 55 minutes. Like, really? Wow. It flew by. That oh, absolutely. Awesome earbud. <laughs> okay. Here we go. All right. It's been wonderful. Lovely conversation. Yes. Thank like, you. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great. And we didn't even talk about pool boys the whole time. I know. So, That's too know. bad. Next time. Next time. We'll do I'll that. just, I'll just post <laughs> pictures of them and <laughs> you can, you can just, live vicariously. Sure. I'll just draw all over my, my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so really much, Martin. Chat. Yeah. yeah. Same here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will send you the replay after and um, yeah, okay. we're good. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. Bye.